I pray that in the name of Jesus, the remaining days to end this month, may God display the fulfillment of his glorious promises concerning you and me in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything he has promised you and me for the month of June that is here to reach us, may they begin to reach our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So you are welcome. Um, as you, we know, after taking the word, we'll take the communion that is flesh and blood and uh, by the grace of God, whatsoever we trust him for, in healing, deliverance, miracle of any kind, he will show up concerning us in Jesus' name. And we all will become the testimony that we desire. Now we are still on the topic winning the world for Jesus. Now let's not forget, I told us that uh, we started it the first Wednesday of this month. We've been looking at how we as children of God can win this world for Jesus. Evangelism is what we've been looking at. Last week, Wednesday, I want to flash back. Please, maybe you should help me change this man. Give me the other one. Then the monitor at the entrance is feeding back. Reduce the monitor at the entrance so that the feedback will not be coming in. Um, last week's uh, Wednesday, we talked about evangelism without words. Words, W-R-D-S. Winning souls without opening your mouth to preach. And last week when I told us that evangelism without words is all about your character. You know, when you begin to re you reflect, you show the, la the, the character of Jesus. Your character begins to attract people to Christ. Hallelujah. And we said there is no how that can be done. Number one, until you have, you submit yourself to the molding power of the word of God. I told you last week that once you hear the word of God preached and that word of God triggers your conscience that you need to improve in that aspect, you submit. Now, so people fight with the word of God. They battle the world. The word of God that you fight with cannot transform you. It is the word of God that you are set. Change this mic for me, please. It is the word of God that you accept that will transform your life. But the word of God you resist will not do anything for you. Praise the Lord. We also said last week, I'm flashing back so that you can remember. We also said last week that for you to be transformed by the word, you need to enforce yourself to act in line. That your number one enemy is not Satan. Your number one enemy is your flesh. Your, the human body doesn't want to do what it is. And I told us last week that we need to enforce ourselves to act in line. And we confirmed that from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, where Paul the apostle say, said, I beat my flesh and put it under subjection so that I must have run this race uh, I will not run in vain. Then number th uh, three, we talked about feeling that will make you think that you have gotten there. Nobody has gotten there yet. We all are still in the process of getting to the point of maturity. Then we talked about truth you should know about yourself as a believer. I said number one, I said it last week, know that you are an ambassador of Christ or not. You are representing Jesus here or not. And number two, I said know that we are being washed. We are being washed. You can't just live your life anyhow. So today, we are going to the next phase of evangel evangelism. That's winning the world for Jesus. That's to, this is the fourth part. 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. We are going to study from verse 1 to verse 20. Let's all go there. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 from verse 1 to verse 20. I read. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And which was at, sorry, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the disciples. Please follow this. The apostles, sorry. Verse 2. And devoted men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the gospel. Verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with, the, with one accord, and the people with one accord, gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles. Verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many thickened with palsies, and uh, they were lame, sorry, and that were lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was a great joy in the city. Now take note of all these words. Verse 9. And there was a certain man called Simeon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power of God. 11. And to him they had regard because they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip's preaching, pay attention to all these words. When they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simeon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as he was falling upon, sorry, for as yet, he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power, that on, on that on whoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Let us pray. Father, this is your word. You have chosen to use it to speak to us today. We ask that you give us deep revelation. Give us deep understanding. Let every one of us today catch at least a word from you. A word that will revive our evangelism life. Thank you for this is done. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we've been looking at evangelism. We are looking at, the, we are going deeper today. I've taught you so many things. I've taught you how to evangelize by the blessing. That was three weeks ago. That as you prosper, your life will become a point of attraction. When we started, I told you how to evangelize by the demonstration of the love of Christ among ourselves. That when we love, walk in love as believers, it will compel 
unbelievers to want to come join us to serve the God we serve. But today, let us look at the preaching aspect of evangelism. Now, we've seen here from what happened. The Bible says there was chaos because Saul decided to attack the church. After they killed Stephen in chapter 7, you know, he received courage. That, eh. So one of these disciples can die. He received that courage and decided, we are going to attack the church. Let's harass them. Let's arrest them. Let's kill as many as we can. So while he was doing that, looking for where they were meeting, the Bible says the church scattered. Now, and everybody fled. As they were fleeing, as they were running away, everyone that were, was running away was, the place where they got to became an evangelical site. One person can be there, one person can be behind the camera. So everywhere they went, the one that ran to every town they went to, started preaching there. But our focus today is Philip. Philip ran to a city called Samaria. Samaria is a city, just like Ibadan is a city, though not as big as Ibadan. Now, but we cannot say Samaria is as small as Okiadu. Praise the Lord. You know, Okiadu is just one area here. But Samaria was a city. This one man, Philip, entered into Samaria and got the entire city converted for Jesus. Now, and if you look at the scriptures, in verse 4, it was clearly said that he preached. Now, let's look at verse 4 again. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Look at verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So, which means that it was not the prosperity method that uh, uh, Philip used. Philip entered Samaria and began to preach. My focus today is to teach you how to evangelize. But before I go further, I want to ask every one of us this question. And everybody must give me an answer. How many of you have won at least a soul for the Lord since you gave your life to Christ? Now, it's not, I'm not going to criticize you. I'm just asking. And I want, want you to give me an answer. If you have won a soul before for Jesus, uh, just wave your hand and say, I've won a soul. So let's start from, uh, I won't start from me, let's start from my dignity here. You've won a soul, and the soul is still in faith. Are you sure? Okay. Have you won a soul before? Okay. And the person is still in faith. Okay. You've done that too? You've done that too? You've done that? Bro? You were shaking your head. Have you won a soul before? No, I don't think. And the person is still in faith. Okay? I don't need to ask you. Yes, ma'am. You have won a soul. And the person is still... It's not in faith. No, I'm not saying here. Is the person still in faith? So, you have won a soul. Are you sure? Where? Your, your classmate. And he's still in faith. That's good. That's good. Sister Oye, no. Brother Benga, you have won his soul. And the person is still in faith. Wow. Brother Ayo. I'm not hearing you. I just feel like this. Yes. And the person is still in faith. Okay. Where is Sister Inyola? You have won his soul. No. Ha. Brother Inyola? No. Sister Morella, I can see your head. Have you won a soul? I didn't hear you. And the person is still in faith. You are not sure you didn't win that soul. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's like you are saying, yeah, fam, have you planted your seed? He said, yes. Is the seed growing? I'm not sure. You didn't plant any seed. Now, if the person is not in faith, you have not won that soul. Now, look, I want us to be challenged by this one Philip. How did Philip do it? He entered the city and though the Bible didn't tell us the number of days, weeks, or years that took him to accomplish this, but the testimony is clear that the whole entire city received Jesus by the coming in of, of Philip. So let's look at this evening. How do I win souls? How do I win souls? Or what should I do to win souls? Now, the first thing I want us to know is that from Mark chapter 16, from verse 
16 to 17, the first thing is this. You must agree that soul winning is our divine mandate as a child of God. Now, that's the first thing. According to Mark chapter 16, let's have it on screen from verse 15 to 17. Now, you must have that agreement that soul winning is your divine mandate. That's the divine mandate of a, of a child of God. Let's read together one, two, and let's go. And he said unto them, Go ye into what? Into all the world and do what? And preach the gospel to every creature. Wait for me here. Today, so many Christians think that preaching is the job, the assignment of pastors alone. Oh, he, if somebody is preaching now, they call him pastor, even if he does not call himself a pastor. So he himself will be deceived to now begin to think that because he has been able to preach or is preaching, God has called him. Now, but listen, soul winning is the principal assignment of every one of every child of God has two assignments. Number one, to accept Christ. Number two, to receive, to, to reveal Christ to the world. So Jesus said here, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Show me next scripture, the next verse. We stop at 17. Preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name and those miracles. But the first thing is this. To be a soul winner, you must see it as your divine mandate. I remember when we just gave our life to Christ. I wrote it on the wall of my room. If I do not win a soul each day, Lord, take me back to heaven. So even if I try to win a soul and I didn't see anyone to lead to Christ, by 9 p.m., I will go out. I remember one day, around 9 p.m., I have not won a soul. I had to rush out. I went to the junction of the road. So when people are passing, I will tell you how to do it. Unt I didn't go back home that day until I won a soul. But today's Christians, we, I discovered that today's Christians accept Christ and decide to be blessed in Christ. That's why you see that they, they can pay any price to attend prayer meetings and miracle service and not bother to even want to attend Bible studies at all. Because most Christians don't understand that they were saved to save others. That's our principal assignment. We are all saved to save others. We were all converted to convert others. Now once we have that understanding, we'll see it as a burden that we'll, we need to to, uh, to pursue. That's the first thing. Then number two, in soul winning, you must first, the, the, that's number two, you must recognize your audience. Now, if you look at the case of Philip, I will share something with you here. When Philip got to Samaria, in Samaria, they were total unbelievers. They had never heard of Jesus before. So, Philip's audience were mainly unbelievers. Now, the reason why our own is a bit different today is that in our audience today we have we have unbelievers those who have not accepted christ we have wrong believers those who believe god but do not accept jesus some believe god as believe jesus but do not understand his uh, his ways that's i call them wrong believers now today we have backslid sliders those who have been born again before I will tell you why I'm telling you all these things. Those who have been born again before, but decided maybe because of one thing or the other, decided to go back to the world. Apart from the, that, we in this world today, we have those who does not believe God at all. So the first thing to do when you meet a person you want to share the gospel with, try to find out who that your audience is. Is this person a backslider? Is this person a non-believer? Is this person a, a wrong believer? I've explained who a wrong believer is. Or is this, does this person, do, maybe this person doesn't know God at all. And how will you find out who that person is? You find out who that person is from your conversation. For instance, I met Brother Gabriel now, and I want to preach the gospel to him. Now, listen, and by the time I come around him, you won't just start by saying, I've come to tell you about Jesus. You might turn him off. Hello? Now, you could start up a discussion. It could be a greeting, good morning, good afternoon, or whatsoever. Now, and while you are talking, 
by the spirit of God in you, you will know who that kind of that person is. There was a time we went for evangelism. I didn't know that this man was an astrologer. He was in a cult. So as I got to his house, I greeted him. As we got talking, I noticed the kind of things he was saying made me understand the kind of person he is. So I didn't preach directly to him, except Jesus. I just went to start teaching him theology. So the first thing I will explain, recognize your audience, the person you are about to minister to, who is he or she? An unbeliever? A wrong believer of God? A backslider? A person that doesn't know God at all? Now you must first recognize who such a person is so that you can know your starting point. Because most of uh, uh, people that goes into evangelism, they, they, they block their own way by their starting point. Can you imagine you meet somebody in front, you want to preach to her, and you are saying, sister, sister, you see, you are putting on earrings, you are going to a fire. You have closed the door. So your startup is very, very important. Now, that's why you must allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. At times, the Holy Spirit will lead you into starting to preach by you praying with the person. Can we pray together, please? At times, the Spirit of God might lead you by you sharing the testimony. At times, the Spirit of God might lead you by you sharing your salvation experience. That's happened to me before. That, ah, in fact, I met a man many years ago. And this man told me something that really changed my life. The person becomes interested. He said, who is this man? I think he's a pastor of a church. And you know what he told me? He told me about Jesus. And do you know that since I accepted this Jesus, I don't know. Things have just turned around for me. Have you accepted him? Or do you know this Jesus? Now look at the startup. But listen, your startup must always be something, you know, drawn from the leading of the spirit. You know what I say from the leading of the spirit? Look at this startup of Philip. Acts chapter 8. Look at this startup. Acts chapter 8, 26 to 31. Acts chapter 8, 26. Now look at how he ministered salvation to this Ethiopian eunuch. Acts chapter 8 from verse 26. Now look at this. An angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is des desert. Move on. And he arose and went, and behold, a, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all the treasure and who had come to Jerusalem to worship. Verse 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read, now I, it's the book of Isaiah that he was reading. He was reading Isaiah's prophecy. Not the book of Isaiah, sorry. The book of Kings, Isaiah's prophecy. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot. The man was reading the book of Kings where Isaiah's story was uh, recorded. And the Spirit of God said, you just go near the chariot and listen. And Philip ran Tita to him and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said, and he said to him, understand that thou which thou readest. Can you see how he came up? Do you understand what you are reading? Can you see that he didn't just come up to say, have you accepted Christ? He didn't come up to share his own salvation experience. That's why most times, we miss the souls that we are to win when we don't listen. Leave that scripture to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Most times we miss those souls when we don't listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We just believe that uh, from, uh, from our head we can just start. Yeah, come on, say yes. And he said, how can I, can, can I, except some men should guide me and he desired Philip that he should come up and sit with him. Can you see? He himself now said, Philip, come up. Come and share this scripture with me. Do you know? There's no time I will have read it. Do you know that the end, that man gave his life to Christ? As they were going, the man told Philip, please baptize me. There's a river here. Baptize me, baptize me. But for Philip to come in, Philip depended on one thing, the leading of the Holy Spirit. There is no how you can penetrate the heart of a person you want to 
win for Jesus if you don't listen to the Spirit of God that creates that created that person himself. Hallelujah. So listen to the leading of the Spirit. Philip eventually led this man to Christ. Let's go further. Let's look at four things you must avoid when preaching salvation, when you are evangelizing. Four things you must avoid. Number one, avoid direct or indirect criticism. Preach the love of Christ, not condemnation. Avoid direct or indirect criticism. For instance, maybe the person is holding a bottle of beer or the person might even be in a disco party believing he or she is enjoying himself avoid criticism the person might uh, be even doing something that is wrong you don't approach a soul criticizing them you know what you should start with you start with the love of Jesus so many people have, have done the wrong thing in the name of preaching oh this person that died you have not seen anything if care is not taken, this is how you are going to die. That's condemnation. You better give your life to Christ so that you don't go to a fire. That's condemnation. But what do you do? Don't look, don't, don't start to criticize. Criticism is not part of the way that you, you, the path you follow to win a soul. So that's the first thing you must avoid. No matter what anybody is saying, no matter what the person is even doing, don't criticize that person doomed for hell the world i can try there's one man like that on uh, tiktok one pastor that always preached to people by force i don't know whether you have watched him before you see i'm telling you about this jesus you better you better repent so that your soul will not perish i've come to lock your shop so that you can give your life to christ <laughs> it's a lot. so avoid direct or indirect criticism preach the love of christ not condemnation number two avoid argument yes Arguments over beliefs. You know, most times, I always tell people, there was a time I went for evangelism like that. And I met this Muslim guy. As I started, I didn't know he was a Muslim. As I started preaching, he said, yes, yes. He has been looking for someone like me. Let us, let us argue. He said, no, sir. I didn't come to argue with you. He said, no, 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 let's prove. I said, no, sir. I am too small to argue with you. And I ended the conversation. I saw that he was not ready. You two, stop thinking that you win arguments in evangelism. No, 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 no. Avoid argument over beliefs, doctrines, or denominations. Anytime you go out for evangelism, understand that you are not there to go and preach about church. Ah, you see, you see, the church that you are attending, ah, you, you can never hear the truth in that church, yo. No, no. Don't argue over denomination. That's not part of preaching. If you look at what we read about Philip, Philip was preaching about Christ. All the preachings, evangelism is about Christ. Evangelism is, is not about church. Now, your church may want to do programs, yes, give you ambience to go and distribute. It's an invite. It's different from you. That one we are going to is outreach. What we are talking about now is evangelism. Don't argue over church. Don't argue, argue over doctrine. Don't even argue over beliefs. Now, what should you do? I wrote here, focus, sorry, let your focus remain on Jesus. Even when they want to raise it, what church did you come from? Oh, sir, I'm sorry, there's no name of any church in heaven. I only came to share with you the love of Jesus. Now look at the one that is going on now online. About CNS and Pentecostal. I know you, are, you must have heard it. One of your senior fathers has gone up criticizing and talking against Pastor Adewe, calling him different kind of names. Thank God for our fathers, they won't, they won't even respond. There is no name of any church in heaven. We all are known as what? Believers in Christ. So when you go for evangelism, please avoid such arguments. Then when we talk about doctrines, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, in your church, do they used to cover? Uh -huh. I didn't come to talk to you about covering 
the, uh, the, the women used to be at I didn't, uh, 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 let's leave so, those smaller issues. You know, you use wisdom to wave it away. Let's leave those smaller issues. Let's focus on the real thing. Jesus. 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 By wisdom, are you getting what I'm saying? Because if you make a mistake to begin to talk about doctrines, beliefs, or denomination, you may lose that soul. I was somewhere, a man just came out. He said, hey, hey, is it a sin to drink beer? Let me hear you. He said, I'm not here to talk to you about beer. He said, if I come to church, the church that you pastor, can I come in with my bottle of beer? Will you drive me back? I said, why will I drive you back? It's not with my hands that you are carrying it. Is it not with your own hand? He said, what if I sit down in the chair and I begin to drink the beer? Will you not drive me out? I said, it's not my house. It is God's house. It is your life. If you have chosen to be drinking, it is your... But let's, let's talk about Jesus. We must be very, very wise. Number three, avoid talking about personal needs or challenges during evangelism. Avoid talking about personal needs and challenges. Continue to talk about the ability of God To do the impossible. Avoid talking about personal needs and challenges. You know, some people go for evangelism. Maybe when they look at the status of the person they are speaking the word to, they begin to talk about their personal needs. They begin to talk about their, their, the challenges they are facing. If you talk about that at the entrance, the person will see no need accepting the Jesus you are coming to offer him. That if you that say you know Jesus have this kind of problem. <laughs> you know, because that person is still a baby. He's yet to understand that there are certain things that God should not do for you. So, you don't talk about your personal needs. You don't talk about your personal challenges when you are evangelizing. You focus on the ability of God. You see, this God I'm telling you, there's nothing he cannot do. To the point that if the person eventually gives his life to Christ and discover you have a challenge tomorrow, the person will be motivated. Even with your challenge, you still introduce Jesus to me. I, need, I think there's something about that Jesus that I need to know. The fourth thing you need to avoid, avoid enforcing them to accept Jesus. You can't force anybody. I've gone out like that to preach and at the end of preaching, the people still say they are not ready to accept Christ. There's one young lady like that that I invited to. That was, was it three or four weeks ago? He came to see me. And I talked, I preached to her. I told her about Jesus. You know what she said? She said she's not ready. And I told her, well, go think over it. When you, have made up, when you make up your mind, come back and see me. So you don't enforce them to accept Christ. Don't enforce them. There are several altar calls that the people did not make up their, make up their mind. I give you 10. If I count 10, you better come out here. Today may be your last day. So those people may rush out, out of duress. They force me. When me, I gave my life to Christ. Let me share my experience with you. As the pastor was talking to me about the love of Christ, I burst into tears. I was just crying. You know why I was crying? I was crying because I was feeling that why would somebody pay this kind of price to save me? Yet I'm not serving him. I was feeling sorry for him. I was saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Now, can you see that it's different from today that people will be chewing gum to come and respond to what I call? 
Why? Because the pastor is threatening them. This may be your last day. You may not live to see tomorrow. You better give your life to Christ today before it is too late. They didn't tell me before it's too late. This may be your life. They were only, they were only telling me the love of Christ. That's why I say, for a child of God that wants to preach the gospel, hear me. Don't be going to tell them about hellfire. Some people, are, some people believe that their current situation is hellfire enough. <laughs> Haven't you had, I think it was, it was a pastor, I can't remember, a pastor shared, he said he went to preach to somebody. And the person said, if I don't give my, you said, if I don't give my life to Christ, I'll go to hell. He said, the person asked him, where will Fela go? He said, hell. You sure Fela is in hell? He said, Fela should be in hell. What about Michael Jackson? He said, hellfire. He started mentioning popular musicians. Ah. He said, the man now asked him, who is now in heaven? If Fela is in hell, Michael Jackson is in hell, all the people are in hell. Hellfire will be bubbling. Let me go there. <laughs> Can you see that? He was not even afraid of what you... You don't threaten people to accept Christ. Such people won't last in Christ. In fact, some, some were told, you better come and accept Christ so that you can be delivered from the hands of the devil. Then, Pastor Debo, she had one. He said he went to preach to this man. He was just talking about wealth, the good things of this life. Give your life to Christ. God will bless you. He said he now asked Pastor. Pastor Debo said the man asked him, what else is good in this life that I don't yet have? He said, look at this freezer. It's full of snails. It me? Look at this freezer. It's full of goat meat. This one, cow. This one, fish. These are my cars. What other thing can your God offer me? As Adibu said, he went home. He was thinking, what other thing can you offer him, Lord? He said, at that time, he didn't know what to answer him. He said, until a few years after, they brought the man to the camp. He now had a terminal cancer. He said, he now has a man, do you remember me? The man said, that's why I came to you. He said, where are your snails? He said, I can't eat them. I don't have appetite again. They told me I'm going to die in so and so days. Pastor Debo said, he now told him, my God can offer you in eternity. The man gave his life to Christ at that point. So, in your preaching, be more caring. I'm not talking about you. Care, he said, I want to love sin. Mm. Show them the love of God. Show them how uh, uh, much God made the earth. Look at what God created in six days. I mean, five days for us is ultimate creation to now come on the fifth day, on the sixth day. So avoid enforcing them to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Then, when you're going for evangelism, what should you know? What should you know? You, sh you must know your scriptures very well. Know the Bible. Study. You know why you should know the word of God very well? So that when they ask questions, you'll be able to answer. And please, if there are questions they ask you, you don't have answers, don't shy away. You can tell them, don't worry, by our next meeting, I will give you answers. But Know enough scriptures to face your focus. I want to go preach salvation. Know enough scriptures to face that focus. Let me share about three or four experiences with you. How God used me to combat a cultist. I didn't know he was a hitman. But his fiance at that time was a member of our church. So, the girl was double dating. This guy now discovered. He saw her in the car, in the vehicle of a wealthy man. So, he was now running to go and stop them. A car knocked him down. 
So he stood up, came to my office and was crying. Sir, please, I heard that this lady is a member of the church. So I said, yes. He narrated his experience and was crying in front of me that this girl betrayed uh, him. He got to a point. Do you know that I was now led to use that story to talk to him? That there is nobody that can love you the way Jesus does. He loved you to the point of giving his life to get you saved. But this is you. You don't want to accept him. I got to a point. He burst into tears. He now started telling me all the bad things he has done. He now asked me one question. Can Jesus accept me? I said yes. He said it in his word. That even if your sin be as red as cream, cream sin. He said he God will wash you to be whiter than snow. He said sir I have killed. Sir I have done so. Sir. I said even if it's as red as crimson. Then he knelt down. I led him to Christ. So you must always make the love of God available to them. This was what Philip did. And one thing I love about God. I wrote it down in my notes. God will always use miracles. To back up his word. In evangelism. In order to make people believe. He will always use miracles to back up his word. That's why you see that there are less miracles in church, but more miracles on the field. Miracles are not for the children of God to just sit down and be waiting for. Yes, it's part of the children's bread, but miracle is mainly for those out there to attract them to Jesus. That's why you see that if you, if you love going out for evangelism, you see how God will be doing miracles through your hands. The Bible says, the, show, show me verse, verse, uh, verse 7. But we'll take it from verse 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. They were hearing the message and seeing the miracles. The Bible says, for unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many faking with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy. So you will see God backing you up when you decide to go out. Now I'm summarizing so that we can take the communion today. Make up your mind that you will preach this gospel. And I've told you what to preach. Talk about the love of God. Show them the, the love of God. Look at how much he loves us. Look at the price he has paid. Imagine for somebody, for a God to, to release his one and only son just for you to be saved. That's what evangelism is all about. I pray that the spirit and the grace for evangelism be awakening your spirit in Jesus' name. I'm summarizing. But don't forget the things we taught today. I taught you today. You must listen to the leading of the spirit as you preach. Lord, how do I open up this person? Ah, I've, I've handled some serious cases like that. Chronic unbelievers. That people have preached to the refuse to give their life. Lord, how do I penetrate? Holy Spirit, show me what to do. There are times that it is vision. God will just open my eyes. I will see something and I will begin to tell the person. The person will be surprised. I will now come back to salvation. Now, if we all are doing our mandate to win souls, I'm telling you the fact. The Bible says there will be joy in heaven. And when you are the reason for that joy in heaven, do you think God will not reward you? He will. But please don't forget the four things I told you about. Avoid direct or indirect criticism. Preach love. Avoid argument over beliefs, doctrine, or denomination. Let your focus remain on Jesus. Avoid talking about your personal need and challenges. Continue to talk about the ability of God to do. Talk about the ability of God to do. And number four, avoid enforcing them to accept Christ. Leave them to make their choice.
begin to tell the Lord to use you. Bow down your hands and begin to say, Lord, I make myself available. Use me for the salvation of souls. I make myself available. Lord, use me for the salvation of souls. Shagada basendele se legede bosoto ye maskele ragada bas. Lord, use me. I make myself available, Lord. Use me in the name of Jesus. Legada basene, ragada basuto ye maskene. Use me, Lord. I make myself available. Oh Lord, use me. Use me, O God. Use me, O God. In the name of Jesus. Legada basene dese, rababa se kele maskene. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Will you go out? And don't forget, the command is go ye. You know the command is they is not they come. It's go ye. Now you can go ye by going into hospitals. There are people in hospitals. It's a good point of salvation. Now, such people you don't need to pray for extra grace to know how to enter. You pray for them. After praying for them, share the love of Jesus with them. You can go to schools. Seek permission to go into schools. Secondary schools. Preach to them. You can write tracts. Write interesting stories. Summarize it with the love of God. But listen, it is our duty to preach. And we must start this preaching the gospel in our environment. You know where Philip started? He started from where he got to. Now, your environment is you start from your house. Those living with you, your neighbors, that's how to start. You know, if you are born again and your house girl is not born again, you know you are not saved. You are born again. Your, your gate man is not born again. You are not saved. Because the devil will be looking for means to hurt you. And if he does not want to come directly, he can come indirectly. The indirect way is by using the people around you that you are allowed to remain unsaved. Now, the day I caught this encounter, hear me, was when I read the story in the, in the house of Naaman. The house elf was the one that told them that there is a God in Jerusalem. From that day, I made up my mind. Every, every human that lives in my house must accept Christ. So go ye. Go ye. If your neighbor is not saved, you are saved. You are not saved. They could become a channel. And I know some of you will be saying, Pastor, what if I preach to my staffs and they take advantage of myself, you know, preaching to them? You must learn how to draw the line. You let them know that work is work. When it comes to work, that principle is different, but you must be saved. And I've told you one of the reasons why you need to, because we have it as a divine mandate. If you love God, you follow his instruction. He said, go you into all the world and preach. May the Lord God use us mightily to win souls in the name of Jesus. And as we share the word, may souls be won through us in Jesus' name. So go out. It's your divine mandate. From next week now, you begin to receive handbills. You know, our convention is coming. You begin to receive handbills. Go beyond just giving them handbills. Take, they say we should invite them. Go beyond it. Follow the person on. Encourage them to be established in faith. And even after they've given their life to Christ, follow them up. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word. We ask that our evangelism fire is rekindled in Jesus' name. We ask, oh God, that from now, let it be born in our hearts.
let us not be able to conceal the love of God to ourselves alone. Help us, O oh God, that there will be this prompting from within our heart to let everyone around us know the love that we have received in Christ. Thank you, Father. I bless this bread today. Doing it according to your word, that this becomes the flesh of Jesus. As we take this, O oh God, we take by faith that this is Jesus' flesh. We are delivered from sickness, delivered from disease. Evil arrow will not penetrate us. We become extraordinary being, but the flesh of Jesus we take in today in Jesus' name. I bless this drink in the name of Jesus. We take this drink by faith that this is the blood of Jesus. Let it wash away every wrong thing in our bloodline in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this is done in Jesus' name. Now let's not forget the formant, the head of the families. We come to take for others. Please, you can come do that now. Take for yourself and for your family members. Once you take it, you start, you'll be praying over it. Be praying upon it. Declare what you want God to use it to do in your life. If it is healing you want, pray. Lord, I trust you for healing. If it's a miracle you trust God for, pray about it. Begin to pray. Lord, I bless this in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak in the name of Jesus. Begin to bless it. Speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. I receive it, O oh God, as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Begin to pray. I, re I receive it. Love by faith. This is the flesh and the blood of Jesus. It will work for my strengthening in the name of Jesus. I receive supernatural strength. I receive supernatural strength by it in the name of Jesus. I receive supernatural strength by it in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. I receive supernatural strength by it in the name of Jesus. Now begin to take it. Take it. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. Thank you, Jesus, for healing. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. Yes, Lord, I'm healed. Ya gadabasini. Le gadabas. She gadabas kendelese. Begin to thank the Lord for your healing. Say, Lord, I have supernatural strength. Yes, I'm divinely energized for exploit. I am divinely energized for exploit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I pray for you today. You're thinking this by faith. Your healing is confirmed. Your healing is established. You will not go back to that pain anymore. You will not go back to that negative level anymore. Begin to enjoy your, your, your health. Receive supernatural strength. The great things you've not been able to do before, begin to do them. In the name of Jesus. I command evil, negative experience to cease in your life. So it is. In Jesus' name of bread and amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. So go all out and do what? And evangelize. Win souls. We will continue next week when I say again. But let me remind you that on Saturday is the first day of the month of July. That's our Shiloh prayer day. By 7 a.m. we'll be here praying. 
for one hour, 30 minutes. Shiloh is every first Saturday, 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Make sure you are here. 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. That's the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. That's Shiloh prayer. I mean, that's July 1st. First is what? Saturday. A day. Uh, okay, what is tomorrow? Thursday. Okay. We see a Friday. Uh, the first is Saturday. So let's be here. But she will get your offering. Let's give to God. Lord, we thank you. Lift them up, Father, in Jesus' name. Accept our offerings. Prosper us in the thorn. Everyone Titan will rebuke the devourer. Lord, prosper us on every side. May we return, have reasons to return here to give you thanks and praise. Take all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. You are coming for the first time. Who invited you? Nobody. Then how did you find this place? Okay, you've met me before. Where? Was it Soteria guy? Oh, God. It's been long. You are a pastor's son, Abi. Are you the one? You are a pastor's son. I remember you now. You're welcome. The Lord bless you. Amen. So there's, don't forget, Shiloh on Saturday, service on Sunday morning. You have two services, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 12.30. Make sure you are here. The Lord bless you. Be on your feet as we share the grace together. After the count of three, one, two, and let's go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's mercy and goodness shall be with us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. A confession. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. 2023, marvelous help is available for me. 2023, marvelous help is available for me. 2023, marvelous help is available for me. June 2023, my multiple thanks begins now in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you on Saturday for Shiloh.